My guest today is Cassandra Ferris. Cassandra, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Tell me, what do you do, Cassandra? What I do, I am the technical community manager at Rocket Mortgage. Um, so I work with our technology teams on promoting some open source initiatives that we're working on, on getting us involved out in the community, on getting us involved at conferences and events, and helping our company be viewed as the financial technology company, fintech company that um, we are. Oh, great. I happen to know a lot of people that work there, and they are all really smart. <laughs> Same thing. I actually joined. I actually joined this company partially because I knew so many developers, so many people we both know who work there, who've been there for years and love it. So I'm like, well, if all these people <laughs> like it there, and I get to work with friends and for friends, I'm not mad at any of that. So that's really winning in my book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we were going to talk today about open source software because yes. you have a lot of experience with this and. Uh, uh, working with open source projects, helping people that are managing open source projects. Um, can we start by just telling our viewers what is open source? Um, open source, so the way I define it is kind of a, like a coding project or a project that is out in the open. It's free for people to use. Anybody can participate in it. Anybody can add to it. Anybody can give input to it. And it's a very collaborative sort of way of doing work. Okay. Um, and uh, are you are you working actively with some open source projects right now? Um, so I'm not a developer, as we know it. I'm not a software developer, but what I'm doing is we have a lot of projects internally at Rocket that are open source projects. Right now, some of those are out in the wild and active. Some of those are out in the wild and nobody's really contributing them. And some of them people just don't know about. And so one of the things that we've been doing is we basically surveyed our technology division to find out their feelings toward open source, what motivates people to participate, and then what projects they were interested in. And from there, now we've done interviews with a lot of the people who suggested specific open source projects that we're looking to promote and grow. And now we're talking about how to release those and promote those and share those and get contributors within the parameters of working for a financial company that has a lot of regulations and rules and restrictions. Okay, uh, so your um, folks inside of Rocket Mortgage are, uh, they're managing open source, meaning they're writing software and they're making it available to the world for free. Is that, is that the gist of it? Yes. Why would they yep. do that? I mean, that's their, that's their time. They've Why would you do this. that? Because it makes sense. No. Um, because the cool thing about open source is that since you can get more people contributing to it, you get fresh ideas, you get innovative ideas. In some cases, you can discover that this team's created an open source project that would help this team, and so you're not reinventing the wheel. So it's got a lot of benefits, but it's a lot around just kind of innovation, getting things done more efficiently, and learning opportunities. But now I get the part about the sharing internally and building things that your company needs, but what's the motivation for giving it out for free to folks like me? That uh, I, I get a lot of benefit from that, from your work. So to me, I feel like if within the open source and within the technology community in general, we do a lot of just knowledge sharing and with the idea of maybe helping each other or with the idea of improving the project. And so by releasing stuff out in the open, it gives us a chance to maybe benefit or help somebody and say we're stuck on something or we don't think of a feature that could be added or there's an issue we haven't found. Getting another set of eyes out there helps that as well. So it's kind of mutually beneficial to those contributors as well as the company. Well, that's a good point. So that people are people out there are not only using the, the your code, but they're also checking it and contributing back to it. Yep, exactly. Okay. What what uh, how, what platform are you using to share this code on? We're on GitHub. GitHub. Okay. Very popular one. I happen to yeah, work for the company we'll that owns GitHub. Yeah, and then we'll be in the coming year. What? I happen to work for the company that owns GitHub. Yes, I know. Um, and then in the coming year, we'll be doing. Um, conference talks and blog posts and things as well on some of our projects just to share what they do, how to get started, all that good Ooh, stuff. conference talks. I look forward to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. In front of people, in front of other humans. Um, yep. So um, well, tell me a little about um, 
the, the, the process of managing an open source project and sharing that with the world? So that looks different everywhere, and we are still working on building a process within um, at Rocket. But my previous position, I managed a an open source contributor community. It was a SecOps and DevOps project that had been an open source project mm -hmm. based on Python, and then they built an enterprise version of it that they then packaged up and sold. And so we were in the situation where we had an open source community on Slack, on you know social media, mm -hmm. and then we had the enterprise community and I was brought onto the company because the open source contributors were feeling that they weren't being valued, their opinions weren't being heard and stuff wasn't getting back to the company. And so with that in place, then kind of how our process worked was we had our code base and you could go in and, you know, make pull requests and everything, submit issues, and then we would look over those issues. We had a team that did triage for the different like bugs and stuff. We had a team that tested and um, I was very big on like, documentation was horrible, so also improving documentation. Hmm. So what we would do then is we had our contributor base, they would post questions about the product on Slack that somebody from our engineering team would answer. And then we would have kind of weekly meetings and Twitch streams and stuff where, say somebody contributed an issue or needed help testing something, we would actually go on Twitch and walk people through the testing process or the triage process and people could bring their projects in live and then of course it would go back and there was you know moderation and things got checked in and then merged back in from somebody internally to the company oh wow that's a that's a lot of management i uh this isn't just a matter of putting some code out there and letting people use it letting people submit pull requests you developed an entire community around an yeah. open source project yep well I, that... I inherited the community more accurately but i okay helped make it more, basically make it feel heard and um, oh, okay. implement so. like little stuff like people just wanted a source of information. So we created and maintained a wiki that was just static, not static, like a dynamic page where we would put um, basically important information you need to know how to find, hmm. get started, how to get help with what you're trying to contribute to. Okay, so the, the community kind of grew organically out of the fact that mm -hmm. the software was useful yep. to a large number yeah. of people. It's a pretty typical uh, startup story, and that startup guy, founder, came up with a great idea. It was a passion project that he turned into a financial project, and now it's got an international base of people contributing to it. So. I see. Um, so that's interesting, but, the, uh, but the, not just having a community isn't enough is what you discovered. Managing that community. Uh, mm -hmm. you, these Twitch streams are, are that's that's something that proactively you as part of the organization team did. Yeah, yeah, and managing the community, honestly, it's not about really about the code. Mm -hmm. It's a lot about, unsurpri well, unsurprisingly to me, it's about communication. And so just somebody has a piece of feedback about the product, you need to take that and listen to it and decide whether to act on it or just getting people to collaborate who might see things differently or have different priorities. So that's where, what I've basically been doing as a community <coughs> manager is managing communication. Interesting. Do you think these, uh, what you're doing, this, this managing of the community around an open source project is applicable to people that aren't a company, somebody that just has some nice tool that they want to share with the world? Absolutely. As an individual, there's, well, one thing, it's very hard for me to separate open source from community because open source relies on the technology community. Right. And we both know there's a lot of benefit from being involved just in the community in general. Um, but we a lot of places were open. the last time you were on my show. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and it's hard for me to put the community hat off. Um, but one of the things that that we've seen is that a lot of times, especially maybe when you're starting out as a software developer, being involved in open source, even if it's not a project you invented, it gives you a chance to hands-on help make a product that you can highlight, help contribute, help learn how mm -hmm. that whole process works. So it's good for learning. Um, it's good for, you know, there's jobs out there that people care about how much you've contributed to open source. And so there's a lot of professional benefits to being involved in open source. But I think a lot of it is just, it's a chance to either grow your experience and or play with your hobbies and passion projects. I totally agree. Um, what about from the other side, from people that uh, just uh, want to contribute to open source projects? How, how do they even find projects that are out there? So a lot of times, I mean, I believe you can just 
go on GitHub and search, but a lot of times, like large companies, most large companies, a lot of large companies seem to have open source, so you can usually find their open source page. I'm thinking like Spotify and Netflix in particular have really good, you can go to a certain website and see their open source okay. um, products and contributions, and that's something that we're kind of looking at and studying how different companies put, share that open source information out. And then once you find the project you want to be involved with, um, the first things to do are just kind of follow the project, check out like the readmes, the wiki, the code of conduct, all of those kind of logistical and administrative things. Make sure it's all something that you agree with and want to work with. And then from there, you can review the issues that are available. Uh, one of the cool things is you don't have to be a developer to contribute to open source. And that's something that I'm trying to help people understand well, as well. Give me an example of a non-developer. So the complaint. biggest complaint I hear about every open source project ever is that the documentation sucks. Okay. Like the documentation that's, just needs improvement and that, that's sometimes true of commercial products as well. <laughs> yup. Yup. And so even if you're not a coder, like I had, you know, I've um, so like the scrum masters and BAs and stuff that I've worked with in the past did open source on the documentation. And that's actually a personal goal of mine is to start writing some documentation mm -hmm. and sharing kind of, explaining how to do things and explaining what the product does. So that's another area people can contribute to open source. Yeah, I can attest. I'm, I'm, I am a developer, and very often that's sort of an afterthought. It's a lower priority mm -hmm. than actually getting the code out, both among the developers and the But the problem is that it can be discouraging. Like, yeah. you're, you know, people would want to contribute to the open source project, and they can't find information. They can't figure out how to get started. Yeah. Um, they can't find like those guides and so i think that that i that that pushes people away it has to like oh i can't figure out how to do this why should i bother learning it uh you know i totally agree it's uh, just because that happens doesn't mean it's right i think uh mm -hmm. i'm all i'm also yeah. a consumer of software <laughs> and mm -hmm. i've been frustrated by that exact same thing this is not intuitively obvious and there's no way to go for help and uh so things like what you're doing right now is uh, is, is useful to the, the world at large yeah. What are the things yeah. that Rocket is doing around open source or planning to do right now? I'm just, so, that sounds like it's a big part of your job. One of the big ones that we have, and we both know Chris DeMars, he actually works on this. He's a developer advocate on my team. I know but Chris, he's a good man. He, what? Yeah. I know Chris, he's yep, a good, good man. Friend of mine. Um, he works on, what's, he's not the only one, we have a whole team that works on something called Spark Design System. So Spark is a product that basically allows you to have a consistent look and feel UI-wise across all of the websites we do for our company. And it's something that, because it's just design focused, it's something that can be open source because it doesn't reveal, it doesn't violate any of like the financial and legal guidelines that we're under as far as information that we cannot share outside of the company. Right. Um, so Spark is a big one. We have a podcast management platform. We have a couple of products that will help with analytics and reports and testing reports and things and make those visually easier to see. And oh. it's actually really cool to learn about all the stuff that we're doing in open source I, that I'm I just not, didn't know I'm about. I'm not familiar with this podcast thing. Maybe I could use that. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, once it's open, that's the thing. Is right now, it's, it's kind of a podcast library and database, but it's something that, you know, could be used any you know for any other company or person, too. Mm -hmm. Um. Tell me about uh, if somebody wants to get started in open source, where, where, where would be the first place they would go? Um, are we saying this person has an open source project that they want to get involved in mine? Uh, either way, either started. they wanted to start their own open source project or if they wanted to uh, uh, contribute to another one. We talked a little bit about uh, finding somebody else's project and looking at the readme files, but uh, yeah. if, I have, if I have a project that I want to make available to the world and get contribu contributions back from, other you folks. would just We're, put it up on, I'm sorry, you cut out, what was that? What would I do? What's step one? Step one, I would say step one is to go and basically, well, to create your own project. You have an idea, you're probably going to put it on GitHub or whatever you're using. Okay. Um, put it up there and then share it out. If it's something you're really trying to get contributors for, share it on your social platforms, reach out to people individually and say, hey, I've started this open source project. Can you help me with this? Or can you contribute in that area? So I think it's a matter of, for me, it would start with reaching out to people that I know that would be interested in it and then hmm. sharing it on social media and 
talking about it, you know, as it comes up in conversations and things. Mm, okay, that's uh. But I always start with people over resources. So I'm like, okay, who's well, the person a, you... I can go to to help me with that. You're right. You've got a really good network of people that uh, I think not everybody has the same mm-hmm. wide network that you do. Um, but uh, step one, get you on GitHub, and then maybe, maybe telling Cassandra about that would be a good way to... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, because if you get help, I know there's other tools, but that seems to be the go-to. Um, and then, yes, yeah, I mean, even if... You don't have to, like, even necessarily know... Even if you don't have a broad network, you probably have a coworker or a friend or somebody you know who also might be interested in this or might want to hear about yeah. it, and that could be a place to start sharing too. Maybe you and a team member work on the product on your lunch break or something like that. Yeah. Um, do you have any issues with licensing of your open source software? Is that ever a problem that you have to get lawyers involved? So that is something that that's where we are. Um, we have to be very deliberate at work is we have to make sure that licenses are written in such a way that what we call the secret sauce isn't out. So some of the things that really drive our, our mortgage products. So we have to make sure that we, anything we as a company open source, it has to go through legal and public relations before we can actually share it out in the open, just to make sure that we are sharing what it is that's appropriate to share and then not. As far as licensing goes, I think we do the MIT license is what our license is that we're using for this. Are you doing any public speaking in the near future? Am I doing any public speaking? You so used I'm to doing, do quite a bit. Yes, and I've missed it very much. I've done a handful of virtual presentations. I know you're not always a fan of the virtual stuff, but I... Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm doing virtual doing right virtual now with you, but I, yeah. do pref- I do prefer in person. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, same, same. So... We haven't done, I've done several virtual presentations and sponsored a couple virtual conferences, but starting this month, we are back in person a little bit. So uh, my coworker, Jason Bach, uh, will be speaking at Cincy Deliver on July 30th. I'm doing, I missed the CFP. So I'm doing, I'm doing our vendor session and I'm going to be doing my talk on career growth questions you're afraid to ask. So in a past life, I was a recruiter and I learned all these inside secrets that you should know when you're applying for jobs. So that's the talk I'm going to be doing. Oh, great. And then in September, we're speaking at KCDC, doing a I'll be there. co-presentation. I'll see you there. Yay! Um, DeMars and I are co-presenting on mental health, accessibility, and what they mean for inclusivity. Excellent. So it's going to be a good... We're going to talk about kind of removing the stigma around mental illness and about how employers can accommodate and make that better for you at work you know, make it easier for you to deal with at work. Other than that, I'm being interviewed for Rocket Tech Live tomorrow, so we're going to be talking again about internally what we're doing around open source. So that's What's about Rocket it right Tech now. Live? Rocket Tech Live is an internal kind of podcast that we have at Rocket Mortgage. Okay. And then I'll be I... doing some blogging as well in the coming months. But Oh, those where do you blog? Yet. So we are, some of my blogs will just be on like the Rocket Careers and Rocket Tech websites, and then we're going to start getting them published out into into Medium, but also some like Hacker News and that sort of stuff will be getting articles published. Ted Neward's working on some of that right now. Okay. Well, if you have some links, send it to me. I'll put them in the show notes. Yep. Oh, yeah. We'll be sharing them. That's, our team is definitely hyping each other up and sharing each other's work and encouraging each other. So I guess that's the other thing about what I've found, and I know not everybody's experience with open source has been positive, but I've found that for the most part, people are really friendly and helpful and willing to help out and willing to talk about the cool stuff that other people has, have done as well as what they've done. And I like that kind of collaborative, mutually encouraging vibe that they have going. That sounds awesome. Cassandra, thank you so much. Yep, thank, thank you. You. Uh, you stay safe. Bye. I am, I've missed the tech community, and so for me, I think it's going to be super exciting to get back out into the technology community and hang out and learn with all of our friends.